All right, we're week two in this uh, strange little video recording lessons. Um, but I think it was announced yesterday that this kind of 15-day uh, quarantine uh, got extended to 30 more. So as much as I dislike this, it looks like we're going to be doing it probably another four more times. Um, and I can't wait until we can meet back at the youth building. Um, I can check in with you guys, uh, hug you guys, and then yell at y'all and tell y'all to go home. <laughs> um, as far as announcements go, I don't, uh, there's not really a whole lot to announce. Uh, other than this will be kind of the, the regular check-in place. Uh, if I have anything big that uh, I need to say to you guys, I guess I'm going to go through this way uh, for now. Um, I hope you guys got all the toilet paper you need. If not, uh, hit me up. I'll show you how to cut up t-shirts that you don't like anymore. Uh, let me start us off in prayer, and then we'll just dive into it. There's nothing else to do but that. Lord, be with us today as we remain faithful to you. Uh, in the ways that we can. Uh, Father, I lift up this community to you. Uh, I ask that you protect us, uh, comfort us as we go through this uncertain time. Uh, let your spirit move in this time. Uh, let your word go to your people and do your will. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Get my notes out here uh if you remember last week let me see if i can manage this uh, we saw where jesus uh, allowed lazarus uh, to go ahead and die he knew that he had gotten news that he was ill uh, he stayed where he was at he allowed that situation to get darker uh, so that when he uh, showed himself to be the light of the world to be the light of christ to be the the light of life um, it would shine all the brighter and we talked about being, uh, also being that light and how the darker the time, the more uh, bad it seems like the time is. That, that means that it's a greater opportunity uh, for you to shine for Christ. Um, this week, we're going to look at um, a couple of the sisters of Lazarus. He's Lazarus or Jesus has realized that Lazarus has died. He's headed into town now. The sisters come out to meet him and the uh, the interchange between the two sisters is kind of different uh, between the two. Uh, I want to see what we can get out of that and, uh, and go from there. Okay, so we're going to start off here in about 17. Uh, now that Jesus came, now, I'm sorry, now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been dead in the tomb for four days. Uh, there, that's significant there. Uh, I'm going to talk more about that when we're talking about Jesus's death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, that that fourth day is kind of an important day. Three days uh, matters to the Jewish belief as far as you're really, really dead. Uh, Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Uh, Jesus said to, to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, Though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that. You are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Now, one of the things I want to point out here is that... Um, let me get a pen or something where I can point here. Uh, Martha is saying she knows, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. So she knew that, not because Jesus told her, but because she knew that from the Old Testament. That's an Old Testament prophecy. And uh, 
here's the thing. It's easy to, it's always easy uh, to believe in something that'll happen someday. And not, it'll believe, I believe in something that'll happen right now. Um, that's something that's real easy to tell people in funerals. Uh, oh, it's okay. You'll see them again someday in heaven. And you can say that because it really doesn't matter how strong a person's, person's faith is. It doesn't take a lot of faith to believe in something that will happen in the future. Uh, the real faith, it matters when, when it's in the now. Um, you've all got enough faith to believe that someday you'll live for Christ. You know, after you've graduated school, gone to college, got a job, gotten married, had some kids, settled down. Uh, when you're all old and fat like me, it's easy to believe that, oh, yeah, I, I can live for Christ then because uh, I ain't really got anything else to do. Uh, that doesn't take a lot of faith. It takes a lot. It's a lot different faith to say I'm going to live for Christ today because it costs something. It costs more. Uh, I can tell you any day of the week that tomorrow I'm going to start a diet because it, it doesn't take any discipline to say that. And it doesn't cost me anything to say that. I can tell you that while I'm eating. But if I tell you, no, I can't eat that because I'm on a diet. Ah, see, now I'm cutting into something. Now it does take discipline because I'm losing something. Now it does take a uh, purpose. Now I'm, I, it's cutting into me. It, this, the faith works the same way. And Martha is placing her faith in something far off instead of I mean, God that's standing right in front of her. <laughs> uh, that's kind of the weird. Uh, and you can tell that she's not thinking of him as God. Um, because she's over here saying, uh, let's see. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. So she's not a Lord. I know you can heal him. I know you can raise him from the dead. He's like, I know you got the hookup uh, and you can you can call God and, and he'll, he always does what you ask him to. That's not the same thing. Uh, it's She has a, a different, ad, she doesn't quite get it. She's, she's pretty close because she, she knows that if Jesus had been there, Lazarus wouldn't have died, but, but she's not quite there. She doesn't understand. That's why he's having to ask her at the end, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? He's having to ask her because she's not acting like it. So now, now let's uh, scroll on down here. And I want to look at at Martha's reaction because it's, it's a little different. Well, no, before that, I lied. Let's look here at the I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, Yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Jesus now, just like all the times before when he's in John, um, it seems, if you're not paying attention, it seems like he's talking about the situation, the physical surrounding and reality of what's going on here. Like all the other times, he's also talking about the spiritual reality. Because when he talks about uh, if you believe in me, you won't die. That That's not true. I believe in Jesus Christ, and I guarantee you my big bus going to die someday. That That's a reality. Uh, what he's talking about is a spiritual death, uh, the spiritual death that you die in sin. And if you believe in him, your faith in, in your faith in him, with your indwelling of the Holy Spirit that you receive when you, when you place your faith in him, uh, he is going to sanctify your spirit, which is going to call you out of that sin of that life of sin, which is the death, which is the, the life of death. Uh, he's going to call you out of that, that life of sin, sanctify you, and draw you into a life of eternity and holiness with him. Now, yeah, we're, there, there will be a resurrection, just like Martha said. When Jesus returns, the those who died in him will be resurrected and brought back to life. But here he's he's talking about a spiritual death and a spiritual life. Um, the the way that we apply it to each other today is that is that uh, 
are we're spiritually dying when we live and and continue in in a pattern of sin and that if we and that in our faith in Jesus in the sanctification that we receive from that it pulls us out draws us out of that life of sin and brings us back into a into life into life with him I don't want to pass pass that over I always like to point out when he's uh, kind of talking in riddles the way that he does. Okay, verse 28. This is going to be his interaction with Mary. Uh, when, she had, when she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in her house consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out. They followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, uh, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Now, we're going to see here a different kind of reaction. Um, like Martha, she also said, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. The difference is, she's kneeling at his feet. She's worshiping him. Martha just come up to him, started telling him, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Now when Mary came, came to where Jesus was, she saw him, she fell at his feet. You can tell that she has him in the proper place because she's at, her, at his feet worshiping him. She knows who he is. She knows what he is. So, what we see here is Mary bringing her pain to her God. And I want to. I want. This is what I want you to see. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? That's the thing. That's the thing that we need to remember today. This is the thing that makes, that makes God the great and wonderful God that he is. Because he's walked in our shoes. When he came down to earth in the flesh, in the form of Jesus, he experiences the same things that we experience. He understands what it is to feel pain. He understands what it is to feel loss. He understands what it is to, to be confused. He understands what it is to feel rejection, um, to feel like people don't like you and not understand why. I mean, if you remember, just up the page here a little bit, uh, people were chunking rocks at him, running him out of town. And he was fixing to go back to, I mean, the town that he's in now where he's wanting to visit Martha and Mary, they ran him out of town, chunking rocks at him. He understands what it is to be rejected by people that he loves because he's there trying to save their souls. So he, the, the, the word is empathy. And Jesus can empathize with our pain. And so when we kneel before his feet and tell him things, like, Lord, my, my house is a mess. Uh, my parents don't know how to be parents. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, my family is in such a bad financial situation right now we're I, i'm embarrassed to bring my friends over i don't want them to see how what a crummy place i live in uh, lord this person that i care about that i had this uh, great time with for so so long uh, is now treating me like i don't exist i don't understand why what is it why what is it in me that that they're rejected lord i, I don't understand this i feel, i have a bunch of pain here i don't know what to do with it when you bring those things to him, he he understands. He has felt those feelings before. 
And what do they do to him? He's deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. He's not happy that you're hurting here. And he understands that this world is a place that can hurt you. And you, you have to understand that as a believer in Christ, you can bring those things to him. You, you can take that burden. And he's interested in it. He wants it. Where have you laid him? Show me. I want to come see. What what is this what is this pain you have here, son? Tell me about it. What, what show me where this how this tell me and talk to me and explain to me uh how you got hurt here in this situation, baby. I love you. I want to hear about it. That's why I, I emphasize prayer every time I talk to you because it's that, in that conversation. That's where you lay that burden down. Take that to him. Take it to his feet. Lay it down. Tell him about it. Complain to him about it. He's not gonna. He's not gonna tell your secrets. You can tell. You can be as honest as you want to be with him. That. That's why he is the loving God that he is. Because we can take all of our weaknesses, all of our insecurities, all of our pain, lay them down at his feet, and he wants to take care of them for us. He understands how bad it is to hurt that way, and it tears him up in his heart to see people that he loves in pain. He's a loving father. I, I can't uh, not emphasize that in this interchange between him and Mary because she's treating him the right way. Unlike Martha saying, well, I know you got the hookup with God. Uh, so if you'd have been here, you could have fixed this situation. Mary's bringing his pain to him. And saying, Lord, my brother died when I feel like he didn't have to. And yet still here I am at your feet worshiping you. And that's where Jesus gets moved. That's where Jesus gets drawn into action. And he'll do the same for you in your life. We've got to understand that. Now it looks like on my timer I'm running at about 17 minutes now. Uh, Adam told me I needed to try and keep it under 20. I'm probably already failing there. I was really wanting to go into the actual rising of Lazarus. Uh, but there's a beautiful picture there uh, that I don't want to have to go over really fast. So I'm going to stop right here. Uh, fold my notes up because I didn't talk fast enough. I think that's just a thing about people from West Texas. We don't talk very fast. I should have known that wasn't going to work. <laughs> but uh, look, I just want to remind you guys, I love you. Uh, I know this is kind of a weird time. Uh, I feel so, so sorry for you seniors uh, that are missing out on the kind of last times of things. Uh, there's a lot of baseball and softball and track and uh, proms and uh, graduations and all kinds of stuff that I know you guys are missing out on. Um, Man, I, I feel for you. But when you're old and uh, you got grandkids, um, you'll have a cool story uh, to tell them. Um, let me pray for us and let's close. Um, again, if you need anything, is there something I can help you with? If your family's in some kind of bind, uh, reach out to me. Um, I want to help you. Okay? Uh, bow with me and let's close. Uh, Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. Uh, thank you that you are a God who understands our needs and who understands our pain. Uh, thank you, Lord, for loving us. Uh, thank you for seeing us through this uh, bizarre time. Uh, I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye, guys. I love you.